Elizabeth's reign saw the hard-won independence of African countries from Ghana to Zimbabwe, along with a string of Caribbean islands and nations along the edge of the Arabian Peninsula. Some historians see her as a monarch who helped oversee the mostly peaceful transition from empire to the Commonwealth, a voluntary association of 56 nations with historic and linguistic ties. She was also the symbol of a nation that often rode roughshod over people it subjugated. Here's a story about the Mau Mau's long fraught relationship with the monarch and we also speak to an expert on why the wounds of the past cannot be erased so easily. As condolences pour in, there are mixed feelings in Kenya and among some other Africans about the late Queen Elizabeth and her country's colonial legacy. Britain once ruled more than half of Africa. Many have fond memories of its longest serving monarch, who smiled and waved at crowds in 20 countries across the continent during her 70 year reign. But others remember colonial times, like the brutal 1950s crushing of Kenya's Mau Mau rebellion as the sun set on Britain's empire. 98-year-old Kenyan Gitu Wakahengari was 17 when he joined the rebellion against British rule. He says he mourns Elizabeth as a human being, but won't forget being detained in a camp by British forces, beaten and denied food. They occupied my land, my birthright, he says. I am not a believer of forgetting. Therefore, we will say, okay, you did what you did. You have said you, are, you have written an apology, uh, 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 a regret letter. If you want to apologize in the future, you can do so. But we will not forget, I personally, will not forget that I was incarcerated for seven years. I cannot forget I was put together with my father. I cannot forget I left my children for seven years without food, without education, that I will never forget. The tragic news reached Princess Elizabeth and her husband while in... Elizabeth was on a visit to Kenya, age 25, with her husband Philip, when she learned of the death of her father, King George IV, and her accession to the throne in 1952. She was to return many times to Africa as queen. Kenyan cartoonist Patrick Gathara encouraged people not to forget Britain's colonial past. There's a tendency by some to sort of say, well, the past is the past, just ignore it, it's a nice old lady who has passed. Um, but I'm also encouraged by the fact that there's quite, especially online, quite a vocal uh, uh, a number of people who are, who are refusing to be taken in uh, by this, who are insisting that no, the history has to be told as it is, we've got to remember it um, as it is, and especially now, when all these tributes are flowing, when all the um, um, when the fundamentals of that history are being laid down, that we don't accept to be erased any longer, that our stories have to be included in there, the good along with the bad. King Charles's accession to the throne has also stirred renewed calls from politicians and activists in former colonies in the Caribbean to remove the monarch as their head of state and for Britain to pay reparations for slavery. Africans, Kenyans, the Agikoyo, Embu, and Meru suffered under the shepherd head uh, and, uh, when, when the queen was at the front because uh, she was like the head of state of Kenya, of the Kenya colony. Because what we had, uh, what we had here was just a governor. So they have no reason to celebrate because she saw they are suffering. The white administration had a way to maneuver group, and it is uh, 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 by so doing that they termed the freedom fighters as Mau Mau. Those who went to the forest to fight for their freedom, their independence, and their land were not Mau Mau. They were Kenya land 
Freedom Army, KLFA. But uh, the, the, the administration had to, uh, to create an image of people who are backward and civilized. And that's how they came with the word Mau Mau, which they have a lot, an array of uh, uh, description of how Mau Mau were backward, of how Mau Mau uh, took off uh, using even uh, uh, menstrual bread. Uh, they, they are historians, uh, white historians who have uh, uh, alluded to that. So it was a misnomer to call Kenya Lands Freedom Army uh, uh, Mau Mau. There is hope. I can say there is hope because I suppose um, King Charles the Dad will see it into himself to compensate uh, Kenyans. Remember, uh, King Charles was here in 1971 together with, uh, uh, with Princess Annie. They spent their time here uh, for two weeks. So he has something uh, to, to compensate. He has every reason that, uh, that his mother was coronated here in uh, Kenya. He has every reason uh, to give back or even uh, to wipe tears of these Kenyans. Uh, with abolishment of the monarch, I believe it will be uh, scrapping of the evidence because they were at the center, they were at epicenter of all atrocities that Africans were meted. So if we do away with the, the monarch, there will be no one to hold accountable. But as long as, as, as uh, the monarch is in place, we have someone to take to court. We have someone to claim, uh, to, to ask for compensation. So let the monarch be. Uh, when the monarch is, is there, it's good for Africans.